guys. Hope everyone is well. Hope everyone's had a good week during the international week. It's good to be back with real football now in terms of the championship and also the lower leagues. It's always good to get back to watching Barnsley. Um, so this weekend, Yorkshire Derby, big game, Leeds United. I've obviously watched all the videos that Luke's done with all Leeds TV and with Craig and, and also with Steve. And um, yeah, there's been some really good comments made. Um, bit nervous for this Sunday. Um, feel a bit more positive compared to previous games after the Wigan performance. And I think hopefully with some players coming back from injury, we will be a bit stronger in terms of numbers and also in terms of personnel playing in the proper areas compared to Wigan away. Um, we have got a decent record against Leeds over the years, obviously. We didn't do too well in his last home game. I think it was the year that we went down under wrecking bottom and then Marais lost 2-0. Uh, Alioski and uh, Samuel Sae scored, and we weren't at the races that day. It's a shame it's not a Saturday evening kickoff. Um, I think, like the lads have said last week on the videos that surely you guys have seen already, I feel that 12:30 kickoff doesn't do us any favours. Probably the Leeds more favours playing away from home. If the you know if Leeds can get an early goal and keep the crowd quiet, then obviously you know we know Leeds have got a good following no matter where they go, and um, if they get an early goal. They'll make plenty of noise and obviously we'll be quiet and getting nervous and Leeds will probably try and take control of the game from then on in. So for us, for me, if we're going to get any success on Sunday, the first goal is vital. And in any game it is, obviously. But especially for us, with his confidence, we need to get a result. And for, for me personally, if we can get a point, I'll be over the moon with it. Um, and I don't want to think that. I don't want to go out going to the, watch the game thinking if we can get a point from it it'll be a fantastic result I just think we've got to be realistic where we are as a club at the minute um, we've got a lot of lads that probably won't gel properly until the new year and that does concern me um, I think if we can be picking up results against teams that are going to be in and around us at the end of the season that is where them results are going to define a season this result won't define a season um, but in terms of the performance I hope it can. the players can, again, give something for the fans to show that they're in it together and they're going to give it 110% no matter what the result is. And I always say, no matter what the result is, as long as the lads try, I don't really care about the result. First and foremost, I want to see effort. I want to see 100% for the cause. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of lads that aren't from the area. We've got some lads that are from the area that are from Leeds, actually. Um, like Wilkes. Mowat, Brown, they're all from over the Leeds area, so they'll know what it'll be like for the Leeds side, and hopefully it's a good opportunity for some of them lads, especially like some Mowat and Wilkes and Halmer that got released by Leeds if they get played on Sunday to show what the Leeds fans and Leeds United as a club, what they've missed. Um, so, looking at the presser, it looks like um, Brown and Mowat are back available. Stendhal says that Woodrow isn't fit, but fingers crossed, even if we can just put him on the bench and give him maybe... If we can just put Woodrow... On the bench is an option there for the last 15-20 minutes if we're in a position to win the game. We know there is a goal scorer um, and he's going to possibly be a big difference for us. If we if we start with Woodrow, we're a lot more confident than if we don't. Um, it'd be interesting to see what formation he'll play. Um, I imagine that Brown could come back in due to his work rate. I think we're going to have to have players that can go for the full 90. I think Leeds are a very fit side under Bielsa. They seem to have that energy that we had in League One, plus more. They've obviously got a bit, obviously a bit, a lot better personnel than we had in League One and also in the Championship at the minute. When they're a big club, so they'll, they'll, they'll attract players. They've got a lot of experience in the side with Hernandez. Bamford's played in the Championship for a long time. A lot of the players have now. They've been together for two years or so. They've added in Ketia from Arsenal. It's a really good coup on a loan. Tyler Roberts looks like a good young player. Jack Harrison for me. Very underrated midfielder. I think he'll go far in the game. Klitsch looks a really good player to keep Calvin Phillips as well. Was a big thing for Leeds with Villa interested in the window. So they've done well. They've only really lost Janssen. And bad looks of things, White and Cooper have um, got a really good partnership there in the centre defence for Leeds. So they haven't really lost Janssen as much as I thought they were going to have done with him being such a big figurehead for them over the last three or four seasons. So formation for us... Um, I hope we can have an out-and-out -out striker up front. I think that would be a big statement for us. I think, like Craig and Luke said, the the key for us will be to make sure that we do the basics well. 
don't be messing about with the ball in the 6 yard 18 yard box get it in Leeds' half and then play football get it on the floor um, Leeds play the, the press as well and they're probably better, better exponents of it than us and they're obviously a lot more confident of, it, of using it at the minute than us because where they are in the league and the success that they've had with it over the last you know over the last season with Bielsa um, that, that system seems to work well for them and they've got players that come, come off the bench and replace the players that start just as much as the way around well I think that our obviously our bench when we have players that come on it weakens us a bit so every player on that pitch like again I'm just going to keep it like Luke and Craig alluded to we can't have any players that we're carrying um, which is why I think there could be some changes from Wigan just due to the the tempo of the game, the energy of the game, the pace of the game that it could be. It's going to be under 100 mile an hour, especially with both teams going out to win. We know that Stendhal goes out to win every game, if possible. And Bielsa will be coming here for the points. They'll be wanting a reaction after the Swansea game, um, losing at home. And in the Yorkshire derby, the Leeds fans will be expecting the result and be coming to work well, fully confident and probably thinking it's going to be a walkover. Well, the bars of players and us, we've got to use that as motivation to prove the Leeds fans and the players wrong that we're going to give them a game and even if we lose the game we're going to make sure that they leave that pitch knowing that they've been in a game and we've given 100%, we've done everything in our power to, to get a result and to try our best, that's all we can do and if they do that then I'll not be then I'll not be um, unhappy but if it's if we're walking around and you know we can see the effort's not there, and you know, then the, you know, then it does concern me. If we can't, if they can't get up for a local derby, then there's something wrong. But fingers crossed, they can. And the, like I said, after the Wigan game, the signs are there. You know, after the Wigan game, there were some. You know, looking back at it, there were some promising things to take away from the game. Watching the highlights, we should have won that game. Um, and it's one of those games at the end of the season. Do you look at it and think, is it two point? Not two points dropped. It's a point gained. Any point gained away from home, especially a team that. You know, they had a few good chances as well in that game, Wigan. Um, but a clean sheet away from home after the game against Luton, I think it can only be a plus. And hopefully that we can take these couple of weeks to get our players back and, you know, you know, get them back to, you know, let's start again. It was, you know, we didn't have the best August that we would have liked to have had, especially after the first game against Fulham. We all thought we were going to push and really compete. And, you know, as I think it's been a bit of a reality check in the last few weeks um, that we were probably going to be down there at the end of the season but we focus on today's result we focus on Sunday's result and we focus on Sunday's game so my team would be Collins in goal I thought he had a really good game on um, a couple of weeks ago against Wigan my full backs would be Cavare and Pineos at left back I would give Civic a rest I think he had a really good game in the centre midfield um, but I think Cavari, man of the match against Wigan and I think Pineos a bit more experienced and a bit quicker I think Sibic can be a bit clumsy at times on the ball and I think if I don't want him to have his confidence dented to the severity that he just loses it completely that's the only thing with younger players when you do play younger players week in week out if we're losing games, losing games, losing games younger lads they'll gain confidence quickly when it's going good but when it's going the other way, when it's not going so well, as we saw under Reckingbottom and Marais, we made a very young squad, and also under Danny Wilson, um, the confidence goes down to quickly. And I think Pineos didn't have a great game against Luton, but I think his experience in getting forward, I think if we sit back, it's just going to invite Leeds to to come on to us. So for me, both full-backs need to be bombing on when possible on the counter and supporting us as, 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 um, as midfielders out wide. Um, but I would start Cavari and Pineos there for a bit of stability centre defence um, I, I would play Halmer personally I think he had a good game against um, against Wigan I think he's high till helpers with set pieces um, and I want to I want to give him another chance um, and I'll play Diaby I'd give Anderson a rest I think Anderson had a decent game against Wigan actually um, but I'll play Halmer and Diaby together I think Diaby is passing from the back his pace will help us against the likes of Banford and the other lads that's in the Leeds team that get behind him through the channels. I think Diaby's pace will help us and I think Halmer's height will help us from the set pieces going forward as as we as we noticed that with Leeds they do have a little bit of frailty from set pieces with Kassir in goal. Midfield, I would bring Jacob Brown in straight away on the right of midfield. Um, his work rate, his energy... Um, I'll put Jacob Brown back on the right of midfield. People are saying maybe possibly ease him in after he's been out for a while with an injury. But I think 
if he's fully fit, then he's fit to play, he's fit to start. You know, that's the way I look at it. And then if he's just coming back into it, bring him off and then change it round. Then that's where I'd do. I'd bring, I'd put Brown on the right of midfield. His work rate, getting back, helping out Cavari will help. Um, he can also play other parts of the pitch as well. And we know with Stendhal that Brown gives 110 percent, and we want every person on that pitch to be trying. We can't be carrying anyone. Centre midfield, if Mowat's fit, bring him back in. Um, looks like Dougal's still unfit, unfortunately. And I would put McGee in there. Um, I would have Mowat maybe a bit deeper, maybe trying to dictate the game a bit better and have McGee and pushing on a bit further. But midfield, I think, is where it's going to be won. If Leeds get control of the midfield and over runners and um, they've got some quick lads through that middle of the park, then it's going to be difficult. Brad would start Mowat and McGee in. Left-hand side, I played Luke Thomas. Um, got well, got the player of the player of the month for August. So well done for him for that. And I think again, his work rate um, will help us on the left-hand side. I think Tiam, he struggles to get back, or he's very reluctant to get back. One of the other um, when going forward, and I think we're always overexposed when Tiam plays on the left-hand side with our full backs because then their full back can overtake Tiam and also obviously overlap our full back, which isn't good because then we're exposed in terms of crosses coming into the box that we know that this season we haven't caught with very well. So for me, Thomas and Brown would be the wingers out wide. Um, I would play Beira just behind Woodrow if fit. I think the only reason I'm saying that, and peop, you know, Beira hasn't had a great start to the season, um, and I have called him out previously on them performances um, because I just think he hasn't been at the races, he hasn't offered as much at all. But against Wigan again, I thought he had a really good. I thought he had a really good game compared to what he had showed previously. And I think with Bear, I'm just looking at it from a tactical point of view. Bear's work ethic will be a lot better than Wilkes through there. Possibly Chaplin as well could be an option there, but I think he will start Bearer. Um, if Woodrow is fit, I would start Woodrow just because I think he gives us more of a goal-scoring threat. We haven't really, obviously, we haven't. Well, I don't know how many goals we've scored at all this season. Um, we haven't scored over six or seven, um, so we need to be showing a bit more of a threat going forward. And if we have Woodrow up front, I think that will give us a better option. Um, and if not, I, I don't know if he's wanted to start Schmidt. Brown would start an out and out striker. You know, if we're bringing Schmidt into the club, got to give him a chance. You know, how is he going to prove himself if he's good enough or not? If he's not given the opportunity. And what better way to do that than against Leeds United? And I'm sure he'll be raring to go if, if given the chance. You know, he's been on international duty with Austria. Um, hopefully that'll have done him good, been around a, a setup full of good, experienced international standard players. And I, I like, I, you know, I think he had a good chance against Wigan. And, I, I you know, I've, watching the highlights of me, he looks like a good little player. There is a difference, obviously, between the Austrian Bundesliga and the championship, as we know, there are leagues in Europe that aren't as good as the championship. Um, but personally, I'd give him a chance because he's an out and out striker. I, I don't want to be seeing players that are playing in positions that they're not comfortable in. We can't be we can't be doing that against Leeds. We've got to have the best players in the best positions. You know, play the best players for the game. Don't be messing about with it. Keep it simple. For me, the tactics will be keep it simple. Get it in their half. If we're playing on the counter-attack, because we're not going to get many opportunities to score, they'll probably have good 60-70% of possession in the game, looking at it, um, with the quality of players that they have, Hernandez, Phillips, Click will try and dictate the game from midfield. But we've got to make sure that we're aggressive in the tackle, we don't give them time on the ball, we're in the face, we make it hard for them. If we get set pieces, the set pieces have got to be good quality, we can't be having... You know, we can't be not testing Casilla in their defence. We've got to be making it uncomfortable for them. Bodies flying in the box when we do go forward. And we've got to be committing. If we get, we might only get one or two concrete chances during the game, we will get chances. It's a game of football. Every team gets a chance, no matter who you play. You'll get one chance or two chances in the game. We've got to be clinical and take them chances because it could be the difference between getting three points or getting no points and leads capitalising, going up the other end and scoring. You know, that's the championship for you. If you don't take your chances, you get punished and we know that that's how it is. It's, it's happened before and it'll happen again. Um, I'd be happy with a point and a good performance. I'd be, I'd be really happy with that. Take a bit of momentum going into the Forest game. We've got some tough games in, in September. Brentford, Forest and Leeds. Arguably tougher than, than last month on paper. But knowing us, we always surprise people and we'll probably 
do the unthinkable and get some decent results against the teams that we're going to get hammered against and then the teams that we could get results realistically against will lose. That sums us up as a club, doesn't it? And also, that's been that's been bad since I've been watching this since 1994. That summed us up all together. So the team, that's the team that I would play. Um, it, it, you know, Chaplin, I think, could get considered. Wilkes as well, I think Wilkes, for me, should come off the bench. He's on four yellow cards already. Um, Weather playing against his former club, I don't want him to get an early suspension because we'll... We haven't got the biggest squad. We can't be affording players to get suspensions this early in the season. I do rate Wilkes, but I think he's got a bit more to give. I think the game against Fulham had a great game, but I haven't really seen the best of Wilkes compared to when he was at Doncaster last season. I don't know whether it's just it just hasn't clicked for him yet. But I were, I were expecting Wilkes to be a bit more offering a bit more than what he has done. Maybe this this. You know, I really rate Wilkes as a player. Maybe the step up in standard has been a bit too high for him. And I think that's going to be the case with a lot of our lads, similar to Lindsay and Pinnock. We saw that they really struggled with the step up in the to the championship and a lot of the other lads did. Um when when we kept, when we in the second season of the championship last time when we bought players from lower level, it takes them a while to get used to the pace and also to the pure fact that in League One you can have six or seven chances and you'll, you'll probably get good chances to score in, in the championship. In the championship, you can't afford to be, you know, not taking your chances. Scoreline for Sunday for me, um, I always say a positive one for us, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be realistic. Um, I'm gonna. I'm not. I'm gonna go with my head um, rather than um, my heart. It, it depends two ways. If we play like we did against Fulham, get in the face is not give like we did against Fulham, not give their better players on the ball time. Make it hard for them, be physical in the tackle, take us chances going forward. I'd get it out wide as much as possible, get them balls into the box hard and low. You know, if the Pontian gets behind him, if, if Oatwell's there, turns up, we've got a chance. But if we're quiet, if the, if the lads start off on a nervous footing, I can only see one way. So, it depends one way. I'm going to go for... 1-1, one, one. I'm going to go for a draw. Um, I think if we can get a draw and a good performance, I'll be really happy with that. Finger, obviously, I'm hoping three points. I was up three points for the Reds. I'm just being realistic. I don't want to say that we're going to win 3-0, 2-0. 1-1, um, I'll be happy with 1-1 one, one and a good performance. I mean, if we can get a clean sheet and three points, I'll be over the moon with that. Or even three points, I'll be over the moon with that. But fingers crossed that we can get something on Sunday and uh, we can get there. See you later, guys.